Hi everyone, welcome to practice problem IS04. In this one, we are going to prepare a multi-step income statement. So here you go. Below is information taken from the adjusted trial balance of Tiger Inc. for the year end December 31, 2019. The adjusted trial balance is that is, is used to prepare a company's financial statements. And in this problem specifically, we're being asked to prepare the multi-step income statement. So take a moment, pause the video, try this out for yourself. When you're ready, come on back. I'll walk you through the solution. All right, welcome back. So multi-step income statement. Well, like every financial statement, it starts off with a header. All right, so we start with the company name, Tiger Inc. We put the financial statement name, in this case, income statement. No need to say multi-step. That's just the the version of the income statement that we're doing. It's still just an income statement at the end of the day. Statement. And then an income statement covers a period of time. In this case, it is the year ended December 31, 2019. So we're going to put this over here where the financials go. Year ended 12, 31, 19. All right. From there, we have to recall what the general setup of a multi-step income statement is. And it starts off with your sales section. So we're going to start off with sales. And within your sales, you're going to have a few different things. You're going to have specifically your sales revenue. And so if we look over here at our adjusted trial balance and we scroll down, we are going to see sales revenue of $200,000. And so I'm going to put sales revenue, 200000 But there are some reductions to revenue that can occur, specifically in the forms of returns and allowances and discounts. These are known as contra revenues. And so if I look in my list, I see that I have sales discounts of 15000 right here. And if I look for sales, returns, and allowances, I don't see any of those. So it looks like we just have the one contra revenue, less sales discounts of 15000 Put it in parentheses because we're subtracting that out. And the net of those two is what's called net sales. In this case, 185000 all right, once you've figured out your sales revenue and then, of course, the net sales, taking any deductions out of that revenue, the next step is to list the cost of sales and net those together to get the gross profit on those sales. So cost of sales has a specific name. It's called cost of goods sold. It's right there at 85000 Generally, that's abbreviated COGS. Again, I'm going to put that in parentheses, showing that it's subtraction. And when I net those two together, as I said, that's going to give us what's known as the gross profit of the company. In this case, 100000 Now, before we start losing track of what we've used, what we've not used, I'm going to go ahead and scratch out the, the items that we've used so far. So we've used cost of goods sold, we've used the sales discount, and we've used the sales revenue. This is just to help us stay organized as we do the problem. Now, the multi-step income statement, it has two main components. The first component being the operating section, the second co component being the non-operating section. We're knee-deep in the operating section right now. In fact, what we've done so far is we've covered our operating revenue, that revenue coming from our sales, and we've also subtracted out our most primary cost, which is the cost of those sales. But as part of our operations, we are going to have other costs and those are known as our operating expenses. So that's going to come next because we are in our operating section here. Operating expenses, um, there's two ways to think about it. One way to think about it is it's everything that's done in the course of business. All expenses incurred in the course of regular business. Another way to think about it is it's anything that's not part of non-operating. All right, and, and the reason I say that is because non-operating has a very distinguished list to it. Non-operating covers things such as interest, gains and losses, and dividend revenue. So there's only four items, really, that show up in non-operating. 
also listed with non-operating, not, not as part of like other revenues and expenses, but by itself are, are taxes. And so really you could say five things, right? The four core non-operating plus taxes. Anything that's not one of those things is going to be operating. And so let's take a look over at our, our given information real quick. And let's just do a little bit of organization to help us out with this. Notice our first line, interest revenue. As I said, interest is one of the items that is considered non-operating. And so I'm just going to put next to this as a, as a reminder here. I'm going to put an N. That's going to go in non-operating. Salaries expense, that's not one of the items I mentioned. And you can reasonably think, well, salaries are a part of you know paying your employees, which is pretty much part of your core business. You have to play, pay employees to run. So that's going to show up in operating. Cash. Cash actually doesn't show up on the income statement. Cash here is a detractor. That's a balance sheet item. And so I'm just going to scratch that out. We're not going to need it. Accounts payable, same thing. That's a balance sheet item. Let's go ahead and scratch that out too. Loss on sale. Remember, I said one of the key words for non-operating, loss. So that's non-operating. Retained earnings, again, a balance sheet item. We'll go ahead and scratch that out. Taxes, I mentioned that taxes kind of stands by itself down below in the non-operating section, so that's non-operating. Dividend revenue, another non-operating. And utilities expense, that's not one of our non-operating. You can reasonably think utilities, that's part of keeping your water flowing, your electricity running. That is part of your everyday business, so that's operating. All right, so now we've cleaned up our operating expenses. We identified two of them. I'm going to go ahead and list those two salaries expense and utilities expense salaries expense was 60,000 utilities expense was 10,000 now i'm going to go ahead and put these in parentheses because they are expenses they do get subtracted you don't have to put them in parentheses you you could just add them up um, but I'm going to go ahead and parentheses them, and this is going to be total operating expenses of 70000 And then to finish off our operating section, because notice we've taken care of operating income, we've taken care of primary operating cost, we've taken care of other operating costs. This is now the end of the operating portion of the multi-step income statement. And so it ends with something called income from operations. So in this case, um, our gross profit was 100000 Our operating expenses were 70000 That means our income from operations is $30,000. Now you notice I've hit the end of this slide. So I'm going to go ahead and copy over our, um, uh, our income from operations to the next slide. I'll copy over our notes over here as well, um, and I'll do the non-operating section on a fresh page. But this is just the first half of our income statement. This is not the whole thing yet. Um, let me go ahead and cross out the stuff we've used. We've used salaries expense. We have used utilities expense. So it looks like we're going to have three non-operating lines to address. I'm going to go ahead and copy that just so we've got it with us. All right, and income from ops was 30000 So. Let me paste those notes. Let me go ahead and recopy our, I'm going to put dot, 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 because this is coming from the prior page. Income from ops is where we left off at 30000 And now let's continue. So remember, that was our operating section. We're now moving on to our non-operating section. That starts off with a piece that's called other revs and gains and other expenses and losses. Now, when we talk about other revs and gains and other expenses and losses, what we're talking about is interest revenue, interest expense, dividend revenue, gains, and losses. Those are our kind of keywords that we're looking for. So we've got some interest revenue here, 3,200. That's gonna go under other revs and gains. We've got some dividend revenue, 12000 That's going to go under other revs and gains. So let's go ahead and list those. I'm just going to put them in order of magnitude, give myself a little bit of space here. So dividend revenue, 12000 
interest revenue of 3200 so that takes care of this line and this line and then what I have left is a loss on sale that's going to go in other expenses and losses and income taxes which as I mentioned are going to be listed separately so let's go ahead and put our loss on sale which is 12,000 now notice oh, I'm going to put that in parentheses because that's going to be a subtraction. Notice I didn't subtotal other revs and gains, and I'm not subtotaling other expenses and losses. There's no need to do so for those sections. You could. It doesn't hurt. But typically, this is all considered just kind of one big non-operating section, so you don't really necessarily worry about subtotals there. However, we are going to do a subtotal at this point. And the reason we're doing a subtotal at this point is because we have one item left, and that's called taxes, right? And generally, we like to show investors what was the result of our business prior to the government-mandated taxes. And so we're going to add these up. Remember, we were at income from ops, 30000 We've added 12, added 32, subtracted another 12. And so that's going to put us at 33200 And we call that income, and this is not creative at all, income before taxes. All right, we've got one last item to address and that's that income tax expense. So income tax expense, 3,000. And finally, we have used every single item that was given to us and we are at what's known as the bottom line of the income statement known as net income and in this case, that's going to come out to 30200 So remember, on the first slide, we did the operating section of the multi-step income statement. Starts with sales, takes out primary expense, takes out other operating expenses, gives you what's known as income from operations. On the second slide, we did the non-operating portion of the multi-step income statement, where you take your income from ops, you adjust it for any other revenues, gains, expenses, or losses. That tells you your income before your taxes. Then you take out your taxes, and that ultimately tells investors what your net income was. All right, that's it for this one. Hope you found it helpful. Hope you join me for another video.